I uh, will speak for 20 minutes about some of the challenges and opportunities that we see for the large-scale violence prevention efforts that are happening in Mexico. And um, I work at the National Institute for Evaluation of Education. And uh, in Mexico, there's a big program that's moving the country. It has become a presidential priority to get peace within the country. You will understand why after you listen to the content. Not only I will speak briefly about uh, the background of what has gotten us involved in, in addressing this issue in Mexico, but also I will share with you epidemiologic data on homicides and suicides and uh, talk to you specifically about what's going on in one of our states, one of the hardest written states of violence, which is Chihuahua and their cities, what they are doing with their violence prevention programs, and to end with some reflections regarding our main challenges and opportunities. And I will uh, be quick uh, with my words. If I go too fast, you can tell me to slow down. So you all know uh, the global report that came out in 2004 had a similar parallel a couple of years after. Mexico produced a report of violence as a public health issue in the year 2008, we held a ministerial conference whereas 28 countries of the Americas came together and signed a landmark historical document to address injuries as a public health problem with preventative measures. And Mexico began participating since the year 2009 with WHO's Violence Prevention Alliance. And we became members just last year during this sixth milestones meeting of the Global Violence Prevention Alliance Conference. And this is our ministerial panel during those days. And it was an incredible conference to bring global leaders such as Lawrence Sherman to Mexico to share it with a uh, uh, the, the importance of research and of longitudinal research in violence prevention and to have Europe come to a developing country, come to a middle income country and to discuss uh, what you are learning in violence prevention. So we are very grateful that that event happened in Mexico and I just wanted to share with you some of the pictures of the meeting. It's like a commercial. But also in, in that side of the ocean, in the National Academies of Science, the Institute of Medicine of the United States has put together a very interesting forum called, called the Global Violence Prevention Forum. And Mexico has been participating there since 2009. And some of our key spokespeople uh, and the chair, the actual chair, Jackie Campbell, who is there pictured among some of the participants in this seminar. So now, briefly about the epidemiology. What is the size of the problem in Mexico? If you look at the burden of disease, in, uh, and this is all the deaths that occur during, in the country, you can see that close to 37% in the 0 to 14 year age group are intentional uh, injuries. And of this, 7% are intentional injuries, homicides. Uh, including uh, self-inflicted injuries, suicides. But then if you look at the 15 to 49 age group, look at the change. This is the entire country. This is 2012 data. And for the population aged 15 to 49 years, you have 42% of all the burden of disease, of all the deaths because of injury. And close to a fifth of that, or more than a fifth, close to a fourth of that, is intentional injury. So it, it has become, if you look at age groups, uh, if you look at the, the country, every year we are losing 3.1 million years of life lost. Uh, and specifically in the 5 to 49 year of age group, we are losing 2.6 million disability adjusted life years because of violence and its consequences. Look at what has happened. In red, you have homicides. In orange, you have suicides. And these are the 10 main causes of death per year. This is 2005, where homicide was the 10th cause of death. But it was the second cause of death with 12% among 15 to 29-year-olds. And you can understand. Now I'm going to switch to 2009. Went up. It's a ninth. This is 2011. It's the sixth cause of general death. 
and 40% of all people in this age group are dying because of homicides, and 23% of this age group, but look at this age group, young children, 9%, third cause of death, and this is 2012. We, we are about to publish a study in the Journal of Aggression and Violent Behavior in the December issue of this year where we look at temporal and geographic trends of homicides and suicides from 1998 through 2012. And it's alarming what's happening in most age groups, but specifically young males and, and young people. Uh, suicide in particular is increasing alarmingly in those areas hardest hit by homicide and it has triplicated over the last 10 years for girls 12 to 16 years old and for boys it has doubled over the same time period and it's very concentrated I'm gonna share with you a little bit of data of this state the state of Chihuahua where you have uh, some of the hardest hit areas in terms of homicide rates and, uh, but also in terms of suicide rates and how they are changing over time. Uh, Mexico has a very strong um, uh, uh, history of data collection, specifically on mortality, morbidity statistics, and each year more and more on general crime that allows us tracking homicide robberies across, uh, across uh, many years and geographically uh, analyzing that data. But now I've convinced you violence is a big problem. It's affecting youth in the country. So what's the national program? What's going on? We, I'm going to share a, life, uh, a, a timeline in three stages. The f first stage began back in the 90s with the first national prevention and social rehabilitation programs and also specific youth prevention programs and the creation in 2005 of a deputy minister for crime prevention and citizen participation. Then, uh, as we moved along in 2008, we held the ministerial meeting and uh, a lot of policy and a lot of pre pressure for reforming laws to introduce prevention instead of just reaction into the legal framework. And in 2010, a federal strategy called Todos Somos Juarez began to occur in the city of Chihuahua and the city of Ciudad Juarez with specific policies addressed and being designed for social prevention of violence and delinquency. Now, the period where we are at right now uh, I would say our, our first uh, phase, our, our third phase in this historical quick outlook is that Mexico now has a general law for social prevention which, inc which includes the ecological framework, risk and protective factor framework and it has put in place uh, social policies for prevention of violence and crimes explicitly in the country's uh, reforms. In November, we held the Milestones meeting, and in, the two th in this year, the National Program for Social Prevention and of Violence and Crime, designed according to some of the learning that we had in Ciudad Juarez, has been put in place as of uh, our new president, Enrique Peña Nieto. And just so that you get the importance of the political will behind prevention, the new president of the country, he's been there 20 months, has put his number one priority accomplishing peace in the country. And the framework is all about human rights, about inclusive development, about educational rights for children, and about prosperous growth and global responsibility. This is the major national development plan. But they have put specifically in place a national violence prevention strategy. It's a landmark. It's the first of its kind in Mexico. And what's incredibly unique and offers great opportunities is that it is based on the ecological framework. Uh, and that is in the wording of the law where you are speaking of primary, secondary, or, and tertiary prevention. And also using WHO's definition of violence and of the typology of violence. The law is also calling for and mobilizing serious investments by multiple sectors of society and multiple disciplines, and it's targeting uh, geographically according to the hardest hit areas of vulnerability and crime and delinquency. 
uh, an unprecedented amount of money has been coming into this uh, strategy. And you have, for example, over the last couple of years, more than $2,200 million being put in for prevention, labeled prevention. And I want you to pay attention to these numbers uh, because it's huge amounts of resources, but little of it is being used in a scientifically sound manner with appropriate monitoring and evaluation uh, investments or training and capacity building for longitudinal research to go about and follow that strategy. And that's one of our key findings and opportunities. Just in the state of Chihuahua, they have invested over the last two years more than $90 million for violence prevention, and I will share with you how they are using it in, in a broad sense, but it comes from different sources, and this is an unprecedented amount of money. What's unique about this program is that all that money is being spent by different sectors by the Ministry of the Interior, by the Ministry of Finance, by the Ministry of Education, or the Ministry of Health, or the Ministry of Corrections, or the Ministry of Justice. So it's not like it's a cumulative effect. They have designed into the laws this framework where prevention and social development is supposed uh, uh, as, a, as a theory book, it's supposed to work collaboratively with criminal justice and law procurement, but it's not necessarily the way things happen, no. Uh, it's unique because it's focused at uh, social determinants at, uh, and at responding to the rights of children, for example. But theoretically, it might be sound, but the main issues have to do with implementation and with adequate measuring and evaluation. So these are just so that you get a sense of the 100 geographic areas where this program is being targeted throughout the country. Uh, Chihuahua, Ciudad Juarez is this one. And I'm just going to show you within the cities what they do is crime maps and, and vulnerability maps and social exclusion maps. And then they go to the hardest hit areas and target those neighborhoods. In a, in a, 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 everyone coordinates to work around those neighborhoods. This area could have close to 100 and 20,000 people, for example, 130,000 people. And what they're doing, they're bringing together all the different ministries besides revamping the infrastructure of the communities after the Colombian model. They're bringing all sorts of collaboration and multi-sectorial involvement in health and social aspects and most of all involving youth in, in their programs. Let me mention some challenges and, and opportunities that I see in, in terms of the research capacity. And I'm still well, well on my time. So uh, just some final thoughts and, and reflections of the challenges that I believe that uh, the research community and the violence prevention community will be facing, which might be similar in other low and middle income countries. This is, this is the national picture of homicides. This is Chihuahua in red. This is Chihuahua City. This is Ciudad Juarez. These are rates per 100,000. And it's incredible what's happening. Something is definitely happening when it went up, but everything that goes up goes down. This is the period that I refer to as the drug wars. And this is the latest years in the city of Chihuahua and uh, in the uh, city of Ciudad Juarez and in Chihuahua, these are how the rates have behaved over the last years. They have invested millions, millions, and there are no research reports. There are no planning documents. There is no literature that you can actually go at and say, what did you do? How did this happen? Why did it happen? What part of the intervention was responsible for such good results? No one knows. No one knows because everyone went out and spent and uh, nobody took the caution to, to do a longitudinal design to actually track the, the amount of work that was going on. 
what's it this is dangerous i mean it's good that things are moving uh, in such direction but the caveat is that we the research community needs to be there accompanying governmental efforts to make sure that the money is well spent there's 11 huge structural reforms that have happened in mexico in an unprecedented fashion in the last 20 months huge structural reforms aimed at the social determinants, aimed at protecting the rights of children and the rights of youth, have been put in place. But this doesn't ensure that science can uh, keep a handle on, on what's going on. So I think that the main challenge is that low and middle income countries that have put prevention on their political agenda as a priority are facing we know that prevention works. We know well from other countries and from other studies and from some of the longitudinal studies that prevention works and we are listening throughout these networks and these groups that uh, public policies have to be evidence-based. But we see the main challenges in implementation and collaboration. Money is raining upon people who are good-willed but this doesn't mean that they know what works best, how to use it more efficiently, and more importantly, they are not measuring. Most uh, state governments who are receiving federal uh, grants are just uh, too busy with the administrative procedures of using the money and disbursing it and doing that in a timely fashion, uh, and they are not uh, guaranteeing that there are the mechanisms to oversee the use of that money uh, in, in a correct fashion. And I think one of the core challenges is, uh, is the, the great divide that has to do with the quality of education and thus the quality of the professional workforce in, in the country who are implementing violence prevention. So this is uh, basically my my stint, my message, we have a poster down there. If you want to know more about the program, I had to keep it short, but thank you very much. Yeah.